All right, welcome everyone. It is Peggy McCall and I'm here with the wonderful, the incredible, the talented Justin Spiesman. <laughs> He's a great friend of mine, someone I really value and cherish, and he is also a book architect, a very talented one at that. He has 80 books or 80 plus books already that he has written in his career. He's also an attorney by trade. He's a jack of all trades, I suppose. But I invited Justin to be here to share with you some ideas that could help you with either getting started writing your book, writing your book, or completing your book, because this really is his expertise. So Justin, thank you so much for your willingness to be here to help. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is great. Well, I know you love what you do and you've been at it a long time and you're very good at it. And I understand your sense of uh, love or passion for what you're doing and wanting to help people. And no time like the perfect time right now for people to really think about and invest the time and the energy to get their book done. And whether they've been thinking about it or not thinking about it, I think now is the time and you can certainly help them with that. So before we get into some specifics, I just want to let people know before we actually start, I'm going to ask you some questions about structuring a book and writing a book, et cetera. But what are the services that you actually offer for people? Because if anyone's interested in working with Justin, you can let us know. My whole support team's ready. We will happily you know, direct you over to Justin. You can just email support at PeggyMcCall.com. But what are the services that you offer for authors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Um, so it, it's it's turnkey, but it's also a la carte. So you'll have people that'll be about to start a journey and they want someone to help them conceptualize a book, a roadmap, or architect the idea for the book. They might feel comfortable writing the book, but they're really having trouble getting out of the gate and starting. So the first thing that I help people do is I help them conceptualize or roadmap a book. Um, if they're already out of the gate and they're already writing, then I offer a collaborative writing approach where we work together in a 50-50 kind of balanced um, uh, team effort to bring the book to life. And it's a lot of back and forth, it's a lot of developmental editing, it's prepping people to write chapters and then reviewing it with them and helping them elevate the content, offering feedback, areas where they can improve, maybe areas where they might need to get rid of some content. Um, so those are two options. The third option is, is the traditional ghostwriting. You know, you might have a really busy executive or someone who just doesn't have the time to put pen to paper, but they know that this is an integral part of their marketing and branding. And so they need someone to kind of take over the writing process. And, and, and I, I, I do that for clients often. Um, but it's generally clients that, that have um, a limited amount of time, but know that they have a great idea that they, bring, they need to bring to life. So we conceptualize together, we roadmap the book, they approve a table of contents. I then do interviews with them. Uh, there's so many different ways to do it. Go to meeting, legal Zoom, FaceTime. I've flown across the world and met with clients. I remember one time staying on a farm in Hawaii for two weeks working with a client on a book, which which it sounds horrible, doesn't it? But, it does, um, for you. Yeah, let me tell you, it's horrible. <laughs> um, and so, um, but we get the ideas out and then I write rough drafts that they review and they offer me feedback and editing. So it's really kind of tailored to their schedule and their needs. Uh, some people might have a book that's 80, 90% of the way there and they feel like they need someone to come in on the back end and developmentally edit, uh, improve the book for readability and digestibility of message, implementation of ideas, connecting to their clients or their audience. So I refer to that as developmental editing. And then of course, there might be someone that has a really great market that's really targeting a major book house um, to publish through. And if that's the case, then they would need a professional book proposal, um, which I've done and been lucky enough to sell book proposals for tens of thousands of dollars over the course of my career. Um, so it's kind of anything and everything within the writing process. Right. Um, and sometimes people might just, you know, need a little bit of um, consulting on what direction they should go in. Uh, whether or not they should self-publish, traditionally publish, look toward a hybrid publisher, how they can get their book on Amazon, stuff like that. You know, those are questions I can often answer. But really, my mastery and my art is in, is in writing. Perfect. I think that's so yeah. important. You know, like I, uh, when I first wrote my first book, I didn't have the guidance. I didn't know you, unfortunately. I'm glad I know you now. Um, you did okay. I, you did just fine. <laughs> but, you know, the thing that I found, and I bet a lot of authors find this as well, is I struggled to get started. And even after I got started, I didn't know where to go next. And it was months and months and months before I was just like, enough of this craziness. I'm just going to sit down and get the job done. And I think yeah. you can really shave off potentially years of people's time frames on getting this done. And so what, what really inspires someone to say, hey, I want to work with you? 
Like, what, give, give me some scenarios of, of some of the clients that you've worked with and why they came to you in the first place and, and what did that yeah. uh, result in? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been lucky enough to have clients um, in all different industries, all different shapes and sizes, all different part of the world. Um, and a lot of them have different motivations for writing a book. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, kind of the first thing that you look at is, is there's always a reason not to start. I mean, that's just how life is. Um, as we are sitting here and as we're recording this, we're, we're dealing with, with COVID-19, which is uh, unlike anything I think that we can all agree we've ever experienced. I mean, Very this true. is just unbelievable madness. But it's also, if we're going to shift the paradigm to looking at the positive in this, it's also an opportunity to maybe do things that fall two or three or four on your wish list, right? Yes. You know, uh, the reason why a lot of people don't write books is not because they don't want to, and it's not because it's not high on their priority list, but a lot of times it falls, you know, below spending time with your loved one and your family, and, and it falls below your day-to-day -day responsibilities, right? Whether it be a right. nine-to-five job or whether it be running a business. And so that's oftentimes the reason why. And so now you're in a position where you don't have many of those responsibilities, you're stuck in a house with your family. You can't get enough, right? And so <laughs> it almost becomes the perfect time to work on a book because when else are you going to have, you know, a two to four week, you know, time frame where you could really give it to doing something you wouldn't otherwise do. And so getting out of the gate is really a, um, is really a challenge for many people. And it's, it's, it's really natural. And so my clients range from CEOs to executives um, to athletes, to coaches, to entertainers, to luminaries, to, you know, forethinkers, to people that really have a wonderful idea. Um, I've worked with small and medium businesses that want to use book development as, as a branding mechanism to bring their message to the world, to generate new business, to reach out to new clients. You know, funny enough, it's, it's literally the least expensive way to bring um, a market to you. I mean, surely there's, you know, a maybe a little bit larger of an upfront cost, but over time, once you do it, once you invest in it, you have that book forever. No one can, no one can never not call you author. So and true. so you can always update it. You can always repurpose it. You can always delete things that might not be relevant. Um, so the beauty of a book is you really invest in it one time. And if you do it right, you'll have it as a marketing tool for the rest of your life. So the best way to describe my clients are, are people who have a passion, you know, a vision, and they want to bring um, a message to the world, whether it be improving someone's life, helping them do something a little bit different, or demonstrating that they can have a value add through the services or the products that they bring um, to the marketplace. Sure. You know, I also think one of the challenges just from, what, you know, my years of being in this space is that, you know, sometimes people don't even know what to write about. Yeah. They, they think, and, oh yeah, you know, I like that idea of writing a book, but there, I think there's two, there's probably many, but there's two that, that come to mind of uh, real challenges that they're dealing with is number one, what do I write about? And number two, who would want to read my, my stuff anyways, right? So how do you deal with those two challenges? Yeah, well, um, the first is, and I think you do a good job of this as well. I mean, you really bring book ideas out of people. Like, I mean, I've seen you do it and it's remarkable to watch you just drag these remarkably cool ideas out of people that say I have nothing to talk about. Yeah. And so I don't really buy into that. You know, if you're waking up every day and you're doing something that's really purposeful and you're serving yourself and you're really happy with what you do, you got something to talk about. Yeah. If you're running a business, you know, and you're pouring your heart and soul into that business and it's providing a service to the community or a product, um, you have something to talk about. Yeah. So I think for the most part, people have things to talk about. You know, you might've been, someone that has experienced something that was really challenging through your life and you overcame that. Well, there's probably a million other people in the world that have experienced the same thing. I mean, sure. it could be, um, you know, it could be overcoming a serious illness. It could be overcoming an obstacle. It could be surviving COVID-19, right? right? I mean, we're all in, yeah. Yeah, we're all in this together. And yeah, the lessons true. that you have, have, I guess, have created and what you've learned can help other people. So I think that more times than not, what people do is they diminish the value that they can bring to the world. They don't so overvalue true. it. Yeah. And, and then, you know, and it's, 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 and, and it's very Bob Proctor S right. Is this is a limiting belief. Um, but then the last, the second piece is why are you the expert? Well, you know, you, you can become an expert in things a lot of different ways. Uh, you can go to school and get education. Um, you can experience it through the school and hard knocks, right? Um, life can teach you a lot of things about how to survive life. And so, you know, I just, I, I'm thinking about a client right now that I'm working with that survived cancer. Um, and she uh, has shared with me on multiple occasions that she just wished that there was a book 
that was there for her to help her along the way, not from a right. medical perspective, but just from a, a perspective of dealing with the ins and outs. And that's the book she's going to write. And yeah. so you think about it and you think about how many people in this world have dealt with cancer. How many people in this world have felt that fear, uh, that instability, um, so true. You know, that inability to move forward. And, and every one of them kind of does it their own way and they survive because they have to, but why just survive when you can thrive? And so the reality is, is that I'm a firm believer and I know it's a little um, cliche, but everyone's got a book in them. I agree. You know, it's just a matter of figuring out what you're really passionate about and frankly, what you can deliver to the world. Um, and so, yeah, maybe there's one or two ideas that'll come across my desk and I'll politely tell that person, probably not the right book for me probably not a, a big market uh, on something like this, but the most part it's, it's looking at people and saying, all right, well, th this is a really good idea. This can help people, but, but how are we going to craft it in a unique way that sounds a little bit different than what's on the market? Right. I think that's very valuable. Like I remember in the early days of being an author or learning about the importance of even giving subtitles or pardon me, chapter titles, specific names. And how even though nowadays, you know, everything's mostly online, especially today, you know, where people are not heading yeah. into a bookstore to, you know, pick up books off shelves and look at the table of contents, we can still do that online. We can go to Amazon and look at the table yeah. of contents online. No problem whatsoever. And so people still look at table of contents. Like if they're looking to purchase a book, that's one of the things. That, well, first of all, it's the name, it's the subtitle. If there is a subtitle, then it's the table of contents. And so what I really appreciate about you and your experience is that you know that part as well, how important that is as well. And you can inject or help people draw out their best creative selves in order to create something like that. Do you put a lot of weight in that or importance in that? Yeah. I mean, I recognize that the vast majority of my clients are coming to me with a book idea because they want to use it as a branding mechanism, as a marketing tool, as an advertisement for their business and their purpose. Right. And so, and, and I mean, humbly put, you know, I feel like I'm a, I'm a pretty decent business guy. I've, I've built, you know, a, um, a writing career. I built a legal career and I've been very happy in both of them. And so I deal with the same stressors that they deal with, right? Where do yeah. I put you know, my time, where do I put my energy? Where do I put my money? And if I do put my money in something, I want to make sure that I'm putting it in it in a way that's going to create a revenue stream. And so sure. when it comes to table contents, right? I mean, I'll tell you right now, the first thing that I look at is I look at the cover art of a book and then I look at the title and the subtitle. And then in Amazon, I click over to the table of contents because if I'm captivated by what's in that table of contents, I'm going to be interested in the book. And so the reality is, is that you win or lose, on your cover design, on your title, subtitle, on your table of contents. If you can't grab people in in that moment and show them out of value, you're done. And too many people True. cut corners on those issues. They say, oh, I can just, you know, title um, the book something that's eh, not all that interesting, you know, or maybe this is going to be so vague. And that's what a subtitle is for, to try to clarify what the message is. And so sure. it is a remarkable opportunity to brand yourself and to suck a client in um, into you know your world it's like a movie that starts with this amazing action scene where you know cars are flying off a bridge and everyone's shooting each other and you're like whoa that was intense <laughs> but it draws you in it gets you excited about what's to come it's a menu before a great meal right right it's an amuse bouche and so that's what you want in the table of contents you want people to get really excited and, and the beauty of books in this day and age because it's, they're so easily deliverable and for the most part they're so inexpensive from what they used to cost True. With digital, with Kindle, they don't have to buy a book because they want to read every chapter. If there's just one chapter True. that can grab a um, an individual and and say, you know what? Well, I don't need this whole you know chapter on leadership. I feel like I'm really lacking the ability to communicate with my team. And there's this one chapter on communication in this leadership book. I'm just going to read that. And you know what? That's good enough for them. Yeah. That's added value for the 4.95 they just paid on Kindle or whatever it is to get something that they can implement in their life. They just say, forget it. I don't need to read the rest of it. So the table of contents, it's like a menu. You get to choose what you want. You might not like everything on the menu, but if you see one or two dishes, that's really captivating, you're going to go back to that restaurant, right? Right. Same thing. Yeah. So true. That is really, really very valuable. And I, and I'm, I, it's like you said, people don't pay attention to that. And 
you know, nowadays it is a lot easier to become an author and there are a lot more people that are coming out, but still, when that book goes out in the world, that's a representation of you. And I've also seen this where people try and do it on the cheap. They try and do it yeah. without, you know, without investing in what they really require are required. And therefore the book comes out and it's spelling errors, grammar errors, you know, it looks like crap that that author might be the most knowledgeable person in the world on the subject, but the world's not going to think so. And certainly not going to look to that person for anything further because of the impressions already been set. Yeah. How you do anything is how you do everything. I mean, the reality is, is that it is a first impression um, of the highest regard. And when an individual picks up a book, and they immediately see spelling errors or formatting issues, they're gonna form an opinion about the individual that's offering it, you know, lack of attention to detail, lack of focus, lack of review. And, you know, I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm a little highbrow about this, but, but if, you know, no one takes anything from me, the only thing I would hope they take is you either do it right or you don't do it at all. Yeah, and good point. It is, it is, in my opinion, impossible to write a book without the bare minimum of a really good editor. Um, it doesn't True. matter who you are, even the greatest, Absolutely. Uh, the, the greatest writers of our time have an editing process. And even after that editing process, you usually a comma out of place. You know, yes. think about how many books you've seen that have been professionally published where they, you know, the author's getting millions of hours to write it and you find an error. So it just goes to show that if you don't have at least some support on the back end, um, you are really setting yourself up uh, for failure. And so, you know, you need to budget accordingly. Um, you need to budget accordingly and make sure that at the end of the day, you have your team built around you right. so that you're going to create the best possible product. And it doesn't mean that you have to have a New York Times bestselling ghostwriter bringing everything to life every so single true. second of every single day. Um, yeah. But what you do need is you do. <laughs> Your girl's like, coming I, in. I am. I got a visitor. I got Hi, a visitor. sweetie. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. All Hi. right, we're on. A, we're on a webinar. Can you go see mommy? <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Work at home. We close the door, sweetie. All right. <laughs> you gotta love that, right? Yeah, I love it when I mean, a, when my little JoJo nice comes protocol. in. I know. I know. <laughs> so you know, the reality is of any situation is if you're going to do something, you need to do it right. It's going to be a representation of you, of your message, of your business. You really got to put some effort into it. And if you're not at the position where you have the funds set aside, where you can actually <laughs> do that, then you need to make sure that you save that up. Yeah. For okay. Sure. I'll get you something in a little bit. Okay. Thanks, honey. We close the door. Okay. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Ask mama. Mama can help you. Okay. You know, I'm not other, gonna help you. The other thing that I find is people are so flexible too. Like your daughter just came in the room and like we're in a different world today. And of course you and I have both been working from home for the most part for a while. Yeah. And, and I find people are really understanding and flexible with that as well. So I wanna ask you another question. You're an attorney as well. It's one yeah. of the uh, one of your accomplishments in life. And, and, I, and I know it's almost like a, it is really a completely separate field or a separate career. And, uh, and I know you specialize in that, but being an attorney, you being an attorney and you being the smart guy that you are, does that also come into play as a valuable thing in the writing process? Cause I have a lot of people asking me, is it okay if I write about this? Is it okay yeah. if I include this yeah. person? So I would think that it would be. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, well yeah, I mean, it's funny, you know, I started two careers at once. I mean, my first year in law school, um, my, my mother was a New York Times bestseller. It's just kind of been in the blood for me. Um, so I had this idea for a book and my mom said, well, go write it. And that's just kind of how my family's always been. You know, I got an idea and my parents always say, go do it. Yeah. Um, unless it was a bad idea, I just went and did it and they said, don't do it. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, and so I started these two careers at once and, and there really is a nice intersection. I'm a trial lawyer. Um, and in addition to that, I'm a writer, but at the end of the day, I'm telling stories. That is what yeah. I'm doing. I'm helping people shape narratives. And so whether it be practicing law and being in front of a jury or whether it be writing someone's book, I'm, I'm just telling stories. That's all that I'm doing. So it is connected more than people think. Now, obviously, when I'm working on a book, I'm wearing my writer's cap. Um, but there always is, I guess, pitfalls that I look at from you know, a pure legality perspective that I advise my clients on. I can't tell you how many clients whose books I've worked on that they didn't got a book offer. And, you know, I said, well, let me look at the contract and let's make sure this is above board, you know? And so with their book agent, um, we worked on it and we had some really good material alterations that gave them a little bit more, you know, that they could have right gotten on. otherwise. In addition to that, 
Um, when it comes down to the, the big issue, obviously, is, is copyright, trademark infringement, plagiarism, things of that nature, sourcing where you're getting content from. There is, um, it is a slippery slope because a lot of content's in the, in the public environment, right? I mean, yes. you could take, you could take a, a quote from Gandhi and you could put it in your book and you're not risking getting sued. Right. Um, but if you take a picture of Gandhi and you put it in your book, well, then you absolutely are risking getting sued because someone owns the, the, you know, the, the copy on that book, the intellectual property. On that photo. And so, exactly. So as I'm working through books, anytime that my antennas kind of start tingling about something feeling as if maybe we're not going to be in the best possible position to reduce exposure, I always tell my clients that. And so we talk That's through good. it and we see, is there a better way to do it? Is there a legal way to do it? You know, I'm, I'm a barred lawyer in the state of Georgia. So um, most intellectual property cases are federal. So the laws are saying, but you know, a Canadian client, I'm probably not the best advice to give copyright advice to because I'm not a Canadian barred lawyer, right. but you know, I can tell you, Hey, I think we got a problem here. Here's why, you know, one example would be is music. I will tell you right now, you cannot use music. End of story. You cannot yeah. put lyrics of a song without the writer's permission and good luck getting that. But I can't tell you how many times I see people, they'll send me a manuscript with maybe a verse of a song or a quote from a song. And I immediately say, look, this is a recipe to get you sued. And I remember I had a client that I worked with. Um, he was an executive and he provided a lot of information and content. And I'd asked him, I said, let me ask you a question. By any chance, you know, I know you're no longer working at this company, but are you under a non-disclosure agreement? And he said, yeah. I said, okay. And so we had to adjust a lot of the content he put in the book because I felt it would be a violation of his of NDA, course. his non-disclosure yeah. agreement, which would lead him. And I'll tell you, even after we did it all, he still got a letter saying, we believe you're in violation. And we, we, you know, we responded and we shared with him, no, we're not. Here's how we know we're not. You know, we sourced this information from a, a public article and they went away. Okay. But they were looking. And I mean, oh, yeah. you know, the second, yeah. So you got to really think about that, especially my clients who are working with, you know, large companies or things of that nature and might have a non-compete or non-disclosure. There's going to be some things in that that's going to prevent them from, from talking about certain things for a period of time after they are no longer working there or while they're working there. So yeah, yeah I, I'm always looking at it. That's good. Well, so let me see if I understand this correctly, you know, for everyone listening is that you can help an author, whether they don't have an idea of what to write about. That's one scenario. You can help an author if they have an idea what they want to write about, but haven't even started. You can help an author who knows what they want to write about. They've already started. They might even have some of it done. You can help them at that point, or you can help an author who's already written the book and you can help them with that too. All of those right. scenarios. That's right. I can help them build the whole house. I'm a builder. And depending on what por what portion of the build you are in, whether it's I built my foundation, but now it's time to, you know, go up, put wood, put framing, put, I can help them do that. I have my house built, but now I need to furnish it. It's been furnished, but now I want to take a couple of rooms and demolish them and add on. I want to add a basement. So silly metaphor, but yeah, I mean, my expertise is in the writing process, cover to cover, start to finish and so some of my clients have the entire need right start to finish some of them might have a little bit more of an a la carte need some of them might have just one challenge that they're trying to get through sure um, i've done it all excellent all right great well i want to recommend anyone that's watching this if you're even remotely interested in working with justin you can certainly reach out to him if you're in my author program justin is in our resources so we recommend him to all of our clients he's actually easy to find justin spies minutes it's justin at justinspeisman.com. You can email him directly. I have no problem with that. Let him know that you came from us because he takes very Please. good care of my clients and he does special things for my clients. And also, because I'm recommending Justin, highly recommending him, it doesn't mean that you don't take my program either. I think it's important to understand it because I go through all the essentials, like what's required, where do you start, the mindset as well, you know, all of the process, self-publishing, publishing, vanity publishing, all of that, because I've been on both sides of those equations, 17 books, eBooks, eBooks into revenue streams. You know, we teach that in our million a month program. So it's not that I'm saying, hey, uh, hire Justin and forget about me. If you're in our program, great. You're in a great place. He's complimentary. 
he's an essential asset. He's very uh, valuable to, to folks, to individuals. And I've been recommending Justin for years. So I just want to be very clear on that. Anyone that's watching this, we do recommend that you go through the complete author program as well. Plus, you know, getting the book done is part of it, part of your success. You need to learn how to market it as well and get it out there in the world. And of course, that's where I come in as well. I think that's why I started doing what I'm doing is to help other authors create that success. So Justin, any parting words for our potential prospective authors and existing authors that might be watching this? Yeah, well, the first thing I'd say is, is you're absolutely right, Peggy. Um, I, I, I do not replace you. I am a different product than you. I help people write. I think that you help people conceptualize and consult and market once the book is done. So, but by no means would I ever suggest that um, I can do anything um, that would be anything other than complimentary to you. And I would suggest everyone start with your program. And then when you're done, that would probably lead you into maybe working one-on-one -on -one with, with someone like me. Um, and, and I always kind of kid with people that the, the three most important words in writing a book are start and finish. And so <laughs> you got to hit the ground running, but you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of books in the book graveyard that people start and they never finish. So what I like to think I help people do is get to the finish line so they can then get that book to you to help them market it and look at it and figure out how they can turn into a really actionable piece of their branding and marketing. Right on. All right. Great stuff. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here and to share it with, with all of our viewers as well. And uh, look forward to seeing you again real soon. So thank you Sounds so much. Good. Absolutely.